and I guess we are live. Hey guys. Hey everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, from all over the world. Hello to California. Hello to the Czech Republic. Hey, printed XYZ. Hi Tony. Hi Lucky Benny. Yeah, so many people here already. Hey, gear down for what? Nice to see you. <laughs> also, greetings to Wangen. <laughs> uh, hey, Jay, how are you doing? Is audio and video okay? Because we had some technical uh, difficulties just before we started. So uh, let us know if something is clipping, if audio is good and video is good. Oh, and by the way, we had a blue screen right before the stream. Well, so actually, too. <laughs> in case something breaks, we will just restart and be there in a couple of minutes. Yeah, so. <laughs> Loving the this old Tony T. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was super thrilled once he announced it, and I immediately ordered uh, two different ones. So. I unfortunately don't have any swag here. <laughs> <laughs> You're the guy with the 3D printers. Well, I'm the guy with the 3D printers, you're the guy with the swag, so yeah. maybe I need to buy some before Christmas in order to get ready for the next live stream. Hello to Munich, hello to Italy. We are already plenty, 150 people already joining us, great. Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe at first, I really want to say a really, really big thanks to everyone who is joining now and who has been following me for the last two years now, actually, because today I have reached my 50,000 subscribers milestone and I'm, well, I'm pretty stoked. I'm really pretty stoked. It was a really interesting ride for the last two years. Um, well, the last video, kind of blew up and just pushed me over that border and uh, I'm really looking forward for the na next 50,000. That's and gonna, you're going to reach that in no time. Well, your channel was growing so fast. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for the donation. Oh, okay. Thanks awesome. for the donation. That's, Thank you so much. That is awesome. <laughs> That's really nice of you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, so, congrats. It's awesome. 50,000 subscribers. I know, I know we, we met the first time you had 5,000 subscribers and I got the thousands. Uh, yeah. I got 1,000 subscribers. Now you got 50 and I got like 3,500 or something. <laughs> so that's, yeah, well, that's an acceleration. Yeah. I have been spending quite a lot of, uh, of my free time during the last two years uh, to get to the point where I am right now. And I'm also really sorry that I didn't post that much over the last couple of weeks. But my normal work is just keeping me so busy at the moment that I hardly find the time to do any content. But it will, be, uh, it will, it will get better soon. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be, have three weeks of Christmas holidays and I'm looking forward to play around with this machine. And what was ah, that? Subscriber. Subscriber. Okay. <laughs> um, and I have some really other interesting projects around. Some of them are, well, concerning the filament extruder I did in my last video and so many others more. So yeah, look forward to that. What is your normal job? Actually, what did, is you, my normal... did, you, did you ever talk about that on a live stream or in a video? I, well, in the video, well, in my videos, I usually don't talk about that that much. Um, if you guys don't know yet, I have a podcast together with uh, Thomas Sanlader, um, where I'm really happy that, well, we got together and are doing that now kind of every second week. So um, check out the Melt Zone. Maybe somebody can post um, a link to the Meltson channel there, or you can just um, add that into your normal podcast player. Um, and uh, well, we have been talking about that topic for a couple of times on the podcast. Yeah, I'm I'm just a well, I'm just I'm a uh, 3D printing research engineer. It sounds kind of crazy, but yeah, I do metal 3D printing as my normal work as a um, yeah 3D printing engineer, research engineer. And this is keeping me busy, like 
daytime and nighttime it's well creating content for that channel you should actually bring some parts some 3d uh, printed parts <laughs> i don't know if, 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 my, if you are allowed if, to do that i don't know if my employer would be too happy but yeah i can i i would really like to talk about that topic uh once i don't know if i can really do that with the things i do at work or if I will try to talk to one of the metal 3D printer manufacturers and maybe kind of do a collaboration there and just talk about the possibilities you can do with uh, metal 3D printing because this is a really interesting topic. It is more expensive, so not as affordable um, for every, everyone, but it has its... Do they even have small machines? Like, I mean, they are usually huge. The they are huge, machines. yeah. Um, if you talk about a small machine, it's, well, as big as uh, this table right here but like two meters in height um, you need all of the inert gas uh, gas in the machine you need the recoding system you need a powerful laser and yeah. that just yeah, takes yeah. up space you're gonna have a, a huge electrical bill when you put up that machine in your house um yes so i think the machine we have at our facility uses like around five kilowatts when it, when it's running it has a 400 watt, watt laser um, or actually even more um so 400 watt laser that means with an efficiency of like 20 percent yeah it's like let alone two kilowatts for just the laser then you have all of the other stuff which is going on there so yeah they are a bit um electricity consuming more than the normal printers we have right here yeah of course uh let's all subscribe to robin's channel yeah <laughs> oh, that's that's a pretty awesome idea that's actually. a pretty awesome idea and actually you will be posting finally, new content finally, finally, finally and i'm looking so so yeah I'm, I'm, to that. I'm actually doing a home motivation project i am uh building my own heating control i think it's the correct term and i made some custom pcbs which are already here which i already assembled and they are working actually which yeah. is which is pretty awesome well you are electrical engineer so um at least i'm they, I'm, they should, I'm trying hard to be <laughs> but um no it's i mean it is nowadays it's so easy to get your own pcbs and do that stuff i learned yeah. all of that just by watching youtube videos and reading some books and you can just go online and order your pcbs it is like yeah. it's not a big deal anymore and it's not very expensive like i think it's five dollars for five pcbs or something yeah um that's awesome everybody can do it at home so that's that's pretty if, cool. if you have the skill i i think it, i would have a really hard time i did kind of design my own pcbs in fritzing yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah that's kind of the only the only uh real software i was able to use but uh yeah may, maybe uh maybe in the future because there are some things which are at the moment just like bread boarded and yeah. it would I mean, it always, you know, it always depends. If you do like stuff, for example, if you put an Atmega 32.8, the um, Arduino stuff on there, the display and all that, so like digital stuff, it's not so hard. If you are going into microwave or analog or something, um, that's a different world. I mean, yeah. I did not do any calculations or something. It's just based on my feeling, like the trace width and all that stuff. Yeah. But if you go like serious in analog stuff, it's like not so easy. Yeah. But uh, the Arduino things, they are, they're okay. Yeah. All right. So I, I think that's enough for the, the introduction today. So today's topic will be the Dremel 3D printer. And well, um, Dremel sent me an email a couple of weeks ago and they asked me if I want to test one of their, well, new 3D printers they have. It's talking about new, um, it is already like half a year old or even older, but it's a pretty interesting machine. I've never worked with one of these. Unfer unfortunately, at the moment, this is only lent to me, so I will have to send it back after Christmas. But still, as I said, I think it's a pretty interesting machine because they are targeting like the educational market and also um, it's a fully enclosed printer, which enables you to print ABS and nylon and all the higher grade yeah. plastics. Um, so, um, because it has the, the enclosure and which maybe gives us the, the possibility to uh, uh, print parts that are a bit 
sturdier and better yeah. than the normal PLA parts uh, you usually use. And it also looks like a machine which is, I think it's pre-assembled already, so we don't have to assemble anything, but it looks like a machine that you kind of put on your table and start, you're ready to go. Yeah. I'm not sure if it has auto leveling and all that stuff, but I think we'll find yeah, out. Yeah, we'll find out about that pretty soon, I guess. So, uh, comments, questions. So, uh, maybe some basic things about that printer. Um, it is sold at around $1,500. So, that's a bit more expensive than the usual China machines, you know. But it is like a name brand. Um, and I have read some pretty good things about it. It has an, it is fully enclosed. It has uh, filters on the inside. It's, I think, single nozzle. Um, the nozzle can go up to 280 degrees Celsius, bed temperatures up to 100 degrees Celsius. The print volume is something like 25 centimeters or 250 millimeters by 17 or by 15 by 17. So not as big as a, a Prusa and not as big as a CR10. But yeah, but honestly, how often do you need that big, you know, of a volume? I mean, not that certainly often. there are cases, of course, yeah. but if I think what I'm printing all the time, I do not even want to wait until a part that is like a half a meter tall until it's finished. So, yeah, it is it is a requirement for yeah. some people, but I think most of them are like printing smaller stuff. So. Yeah. And um, if you are considering that this machine is, well, is made to print ABS and nylons and all the things that warp, you usually do not print really big stuff because that will warp yep. anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, we'll see. I'll give the machine a try as, as soon as the live stream's over and I'll post a full review. Well, I guess after Christmas when tomorrow, I- Tomorrow, I, I thought. Tomorrow, yeah, <laughs> I wanna get some sleep tonight. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, I have one box right here, which is the printer. I have another box with uh, some filament. I'll just get a knife, we crack it open and see what's on the inside. Yeah, let's begin. Uh, if you guys hear anything or if it's too loud because the mic is pretty close to the box, please just tell us um, so we might rearrange some things. Yeah, so I'm I'm actually super excited because this is looks like a machine that you can like fire and forget. I'm a, I'm a person who prints maybe every like couple of months or something and I want to have a printer which I can go to you know upload my files and hit play and it mm -hmm. looks like it would be a machine um, yeah which would be capable of doing that yeah they have it's like um, you you can uh, it's how do you say it's like you can uh, cloud print with this one so it has a full web interface um, as far as I have read, uh, but you can also just use a normal slicer. Yeah. All right. So. So you can actually use like external slicers and software that do not come with the Dremel. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think it takes normal G code, and as far as I have read, um, it supports simplified 3D. So okay. um, there is a simplified 3D profile. Um, to work with that machine, and if it works with a simplified 3D, it will yeah, yeah. work with any yeah. other slicer. Yeah, because I think that's a thing that matters to most of the people, that yeah. they can use the software they always used. Yeah. Um, I have just noticed that it might it might be the case that somebody else already had that machine. Well, let's see. <laughs> we'll see what's what's on the inside and the box is um, quite quite a bit banged on all of the on all of the sides. Yeah. All right. I don't want to cut you with a knife. Yeah. That would be not so good. Nope. Um, maybe. Could you maybe? You want to switch? Yeah, let's switch cameras. Could you maybe hold the second camera that the others are able to see what's on the inside? Yep, of course. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so we have a manual right here and we have a quick start guide. I guess that will come handy in a bit. So let's just put that down. Then we have some paper enclosure. Yeah, it, it maybe looks a bit used. I don't know. Well, I don't care if it's work, well, it looks, working. It looks awesome to me, actually. So uh, we can see the um, like the acrylic cover right here. And now the question just is, how can we get it out of the box? 
can because that seems to be look there's a filament roll in here maybe you want to uh, pull that out first like right behind the oh, machine yeah okay um mm -hmm. also something which is kind of interesting um, similar to the Ultimacro rolls, these have an RFID chip on them, which means that the printer will recognize what kind of material is in the printer. Um, but as far as I have understood, you can just add any material in there, just don't have the advantage yeah. that uh, settings will be done uh, automatically. We, we have to try that. I mean, it would be a bummer if this printer would not print yeah. uh, materials without the RFID tag. Yep. Okay. Um, is it broken actually? Yeah, no, I guess it's I not broken. Know. I think it can just remove the front side. But it is kind of heavy, uh, and I'm thinking about if we just well let's flip it over. Flip it over and get it out of the box. Yeah, like I think that. that's that's good. Okay. Um, maybe. I think we should s maybe switch, switch back to the main camera. Yeah, let's switch back to the main camera. Let me. Okay. Um, so I'll just flip the box and then get the printer out of the box that way because it's a really, really heavy machine. Okay, okay. Let's not break it, maybe. <laughs> well, it, it looks used, so probably somebody else broke it before. Down. Uh, can you maybe take what that was, was that? the side cover? Okay. Could you maybe take the front cover? Yeah. Look, I'll pull it. I'll pull it up. Okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. So um, we have a front cover right here. We have the top cover, which ooh, which bangs close, but yeah. it feels it feels kind of nice. Um, the inside is filled with like packing material. Maybe it is interesting to know that this is all plastic, but it doesn't actually look. It looks pretty rugged. Yeah, it is all plastic. It's all injection molded parts. So, so they spent quite some money on um, on the tools to do that. But yeah, so Dremel, uh, if every uh, if someone doesn't know, Dremel is actually owned by Bosch. So they make a lot of like home tools. So they are probably kind of good in making in making injection molds. Do you think there's something? Oh yeah, there's content wrapped in here. Look, I even put a glue stick in there. They actually even put a glue stick in here. Okay. Okay, that's pretty loud in front of the microphone, I think. Sorry, guys. Hi, cat. Hi, 3D Guzmer. So as always, if you got questions, just leave them in the chat and I'll try to monitor the chat pretty frequently so we can answer all your questions. Exactly. Uh, maybe turn this a little. So um, what I have in here, maybe let's change the camera angle once again. Um, yeah. Live. Do we have a scene with both cameras? No, we don't. Okay. So um, there is a standard power cord in here. We have a USB cable. Yeah, it uh, looks like a solid unit. It, it really does. Um, I was scared as I saw that is it is fully plastic, but I, I did you see inside? Well, well, we'll we'll check it in a second and take a look um, how it just um, look and feels on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a British power plug. Uh, I guess this is an American power plug mm. that we have right here with the three. I never saw that before. Actually, I don't think it's an American power plug. With the maybe someone with knows. Plug? Maybe someone knows. Let's let's um, unpack it. Just with the... Th it, it has kind of the round studs like a European um, plug. Ah, yeah, you're right. Uh, the Americans, they have these... Um, yeah, uh, square, wall, uh, the square like ones. The, the rectangular ones. Yeah. 
um, a dangerous scraper and that's basically it um, so in here there is a yeah, funny flash drive a Dremel flash drive uh, it has already been used so I don't know whoever had this machine before I don't know what he, he or she put on here so I don't know if I'll use that one the cat, the cat says it's a Swiss, a Swiss power cord. Ah, Swiss power cord. Interesting. Okay, someone or says Brazilian. Brazilian or Indian. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe it's the same everywhere in these French. countries. French. Yeah, maybe. Well, if you say... Ah, it could also be Italian. I don't, I don't, I don't, because I don't, the I Italian know. ones are compatible with ours. But yeah, well, anyways, doesn't matter. They have some plugs included. Um... If you probably buy this machine in the US, you'll get a US plug. So I'll just put these ones away because they are not necessary for the moment. All right. So how is the um, stuff called, which is actually dedicated to 3D printing? Filler goo or whatever? Uh, Magic goo. Magic goo. That's what I was thinking about. Magic goo. Magic goo. Is there any difference, like if you use this one or the magic goo? Uh, the magic goo is much nicer to apply, and the formula is different. So magic goo has these really nice condom package-sized samples. <laughs> look, look at that! Actually, that's a Bison brand. Oh, it's not a Yuhu. It, it is not a Yuhu. So that's kind of that's kind of funny. But it has the same color scheme. I don't know if that. Uh, if maybe Uhu is Bison in, in the US or... I don't know. Uh, well, it's, it's uh, Dutch. Okay. Well, anyways. All right. Um, so I'll also put the USB cord away and let's take a look on the inside. Should we take the other camera? Yeah, we should, oh, you, we switched, have you switched already. Yeah, okay. I switched already. Just hairspray, yeah. I, I think it's I think it's the same. So, at a first glance, it kind of looks like the build bed could have been a bit bigger, because there's so much. Okay, there's so much empty space, but yeah, there's maybe like remove mechanics. that at first, then we can take a look at it. It it looks as if you can just remove it with yeah. Okay, so uh, it's kind of dirty, as I said. <laughs> this this is a unit which was sent to me by um, by Dremel and probably already somebody else had it and I also unfortunately need to send it back but um, we have a removable glass sheet um, this is normal like I guess it's five millimeter thick um, glass which is kind of nice it's not too huge so we have the 25 centimeters right here the 15 right here and from the height, we can go all the way up to, um, I guess, 117, millime 117 millimeters. Um, it is heated, actually. It does have a heated bed. Yes, it is heated, uh, which is, I guess, crucial for, for like the enclosed machine, because otherwise you would not be able to print um, ABS or nylon on it. Um, the build platform supposedly can go all the way up to 200 uh, to 100 degrees Celsius so that's pretty fine yeah um, it's just a PCB heater in on here um, but we have some kind of nice beefy um, nice beefy cables right here on the back uh, as far as I can see these are thumb screws to level the bed so no auto leveling nope um, these are thumb screws. Maybe we will have to Insult. level it in a second. I do not see any probe on the nope. extruder, so um, which yeah. would actually be a feature that is would be really nice. I mean, the auto leveling stuff. It is one of my key features that I want to have in a three D printer. Actually, ah, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of auto bed leveling. I think if a bed is properly leveled. Um, it's it's better than always like tilting one of the axes with the auto bed leveling and it, it always takes some time with the new Ultimaker S5 it levels the print platform at like 50 locations and it takes like 
two, three, four minutes before each print. That's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's faster with the Prusa, but I don't know if if the bed is properly leveled and um, and even. I usually prefer that. So um, looks like a HEPA filter in the back, and I think that is true. So there is a you can put it in your living room, and it is what do you say? Uh, uh, how do you call that in English? Actually, active. Coal filter? Um, charcoal filter. Charcoal so filter. What we see right here is a charcoal filter. Um, I don't know if they also include a HEPA filter. Uh, maybe it's a combined unit. Let's maybe screw that out in a second. Or uh -huh, we can just remove it. And see what's in there. There is no charcoal. Okay, so yeah. So this right here is activated charcoal. Um, it is? Yeah. It, it will filter out the. It will filter out. Just a second, my uh, sous vide machine is complaining. I mean, it's obviously better than nothing. I mean, many printers just do not have some kind of air protection in them. So that's pretty cool, a cool feature actually. Um, yes, it's it's pretty nice because it, it helps you just get rid of the nasty ABS fumes. Um, there is also this, um, how do you call it, this fleece in there, but I guess that just really keeps out the coarse um, things that are in the air. So this is not a HEPA filter. I would really like to see a HEPA filter in one of these machines because then I'd say it's really nicely usable also in like a school environment or in your normal office but yeah. better than nothing at the moment i think you can just modify that a little and put a small hepa filter in there as well um maybe if we take a look at it a bit further so most of the things are injection molded so all of the sides are injection molded um and they are removable by the way i see some screws yeah, they are removable right here. This, no, this is also just um, injection molded. What is the, the main? Is it is it the main frame? Is it, is it uh, the injection mold, or do they have maybe some aluminum extrusions to support kind of the you know? I don't think so. But it I, looks it looks plasticky. Yeah, it looks really plasticky all the way, but that doesn't really have to be a bad thing, though, so, because no, it, it does look very sturdy, actually, mm -hmm. really sturdy. At, at least the uh, linear rails are out of metal and <laughs> so that's that's okay uh, we have ball bearings in here we have ball bearings down here the head moves really nice we have this thin ribbon cable um, that connects the electronics from the printer to the print head this is in the style as the yeah, flat flex flat flex as the mendel 90 did it Damn it. Yeah, uh, many parallel traces to get the, the wattage um, to the unit. Um, so no dual extrusion? No dual extrusion. It is extrusion. a single extrusion no. um, unit. The um, roll goes here on the side. It's then, it's then guided through um, this tube right here to the head. And um, the extruder is actually a direct extruder. So this is pretty nice. I really like that because I'm not a huge fan of the uh, Bowden extruders as they are delivered with all of the Chinese printers. I would have really liked to open that just to take a look on the inside. Um, but at the moment, I don't really see a possibility to do that. Yeah, but let's, let's actually really if you try to wiggle it or something, it is... It is sturdy. It's, it's really sturdy. Um, yeah, I guess it's nice. If, if, it's, if it is well done, why not? What I do not like um, is the plastic hinges for the doors. Because I think, if, I, if I'm seeing correctly, the one, one is, all, is already broken. Oh, look down here. Oh yeah, you're right. And I think this is something, you know, you don't have to abuse the machine to break it one day this is going to be an accident that is happening pretty fast. But the interesting thing is that they actually included a metal yeah. thing in the injection mold to make it um, more sturdy. 
That's kind of nice. I just don't know why they just didn't do a full metal hinge there. I don't know. Because probably it's more expensive. Do you think that's cheaper? Expensive? I don't know. To assemble the metal pin in there and all that stuff? I think, is it over molded even? I, it's over molded. Yeah. I think they um, put this wire in the mold and then over molded with like, yeah, normal nylon, glass fiber filled nylon, something like that. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it is broken. Um, but as I said, this unit was already used, so um, it shouldn't be like that out of the box. Um, we have a nice LCD screen right here on the front. Um, normal NEMA 17 stepper motor drivers for the X-axis. We have a Core, core XY uh, configuration of the print head, which I really like. Um, this is actually the first printer of mine that you that uses this configuration so yeah and these machines are great for a time lapse because the print bed and the actual print is not moving in x y direction yeah that's right and it actually actually has a camera included in oh, it does? there yes it does so that means it might also have a smartphone app and all that stuff to monitor or i don't or... know if it has a, a smartphone app but you can well take a look at your print um using the browser Core XY or HBOT? Is it HBOT? Um, you guys tell me. Um, I don't know. We have the stepper motor driver right here. I'm not 100% sure. It's probably HBOT. But don't quote me on that. <laughs> As I said, this is the first printer um, uh, where I really have this configuration. I'm really sorry, but our food is not behaving very well. What's wrong with our food? So before I used to cook my sous vide things on the Prusa. Should we actually show that on the camera? Yeah. Like the, is the table long enough? Uh, well, I don't know if it's long enough, but it should be. Just wait a sec. This is, by the way, the main reason I came here tonight. Because um, there's going to be food. Because there's going to be food. Well, until now. Yeah. So I I used to use my old, old Prusa Mark to uh, 2S uh, and I upgraded it to the 2.5 and with a new firmware it doesn't let me control the temperatures that nice again. It has a lot of um, safe fail features and these safe fail features prevent, uh, prevent it from actually doing sous vide cooking at the moment. <laughs> That's not very good. Yeah, but I hope it will work out. Let it used to work for, for an hour or so. I guess it's gonna be fine. Okay. Um, so there we are again. Cooking um, fail safe, yeah. Okay. So um, yeah, I guess this is a quite good overview over the printer. Um, I guess I'll plug it in now, and we'll see what it says on the screen. We'll load some filament and um, give it a try. Actually, what kind of material do we have in here? So. This roll I have got is Dremel's black uh, nylon material, 1.75 millimeters, made in China. And uh, let's maybe pop, pop open. Was that in there? Uh, oh, no, you, it you was, ordered that. Yeah, that okay, was okay, okay, okay. a second box I received. Do you actually know what they include in the RFID tag? Um, I Do you think there's a serial number and all that stuff in there? Yes, I think so. So um, I think what they use it for is you can track the remaining length of material that is still on the roll. Um, so also, it will tell you if the roll is not um, enough for the print you are trying to attempt. And that's that's pretty cool, actually, yeah. Yeah. Um, because that might save your ass from time to time. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, they sell their own material. I think it's around 50 bucks a kilogram. So these rolls are, I think, half a kilogram and cost you 25 bucks. Okay. Which is a bit more than the average material, I think. It's a bit more than the average, but it's in the range uh, as the Ultimaker. But as I said, um, this machine is compatible also with other materials. Very, uh, very sorry for the sensor on the printer. Um, is it? Do you see any cable, any wiring going uh, there? Yeah, it's okay. right here. I mean, it has to be there. So. It's still not behaving. 
Why don't you use a different printer? <laughs> um, because I have I have hooked the temperature sensor from the bed to a probe which is now in the water. <laughs> okay. So I have okay, okay, a okay, really okay. precise reading of the of the temperature that is in the cooking pot. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let's go back to the main topic. So, um, they also sent me three other rolls of material. We have a red PLA material. Oh, and it's one. It is one point seven five millimeters. It's one point seven five millimeters. Yeah. Um, we have eco ABS filament, whatever eco means, um, in black, and we have some translucent PETG. So nylon PETG ABS PLA, um, the whole range. I think I'm going to be using. I am quite interested to see how the printer works with PLA since it's fully enclosed because that's usually <coughs> bad for printing PLA. Well, um, I don't know. I mean, it got a uh, a fan, so you know it can regulate the temperature in the inside. Yeah. Three D Gussner, yes, I think he hooked up the temperature sensor into our food pot, right? Yes, Here. I did. <laughs> so, uh, so the Prusa is, is kind of regulating the inside temperature. Yeah, just like a real sous vide cooker would would do. But as I said, with the new firmware, it's behaving not as nicely any anymore as it used to. Um, oh, we got over 200 people watching, by the way, yeah. which is which is actually pretty awesome. Nice. Okay, so how about that? Let's turn on the printer and see what's yes, what the display uh, does. Close the lid. Uh, where do we have the power cord? Oh, it's here. Um, you mean the Indian one? Uh, not the German. Uh, the is, is it actually German, Austrian? It's a uh, European. Yeah. Where is it used? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where is it used outside of Germany. Austria, I think, have the same platform. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Actually, I do not know. Okay. Um, yeah, 3D Gussner could be true, actually, because it, of course, the temperature, yeah, it says already, it, it says bad preheat error. Um, I think yeah. that's popping up all the time. And I think 3D Gussner is right because the temperature is not acting as it would uh, just on the bed. Yeah, it heats and heats and heats, nothing happens. So that's going to be a safety feature. It is a safety feature. But it, it worked really well with the old firmware. The new one has more uh, fail-safe included. That's the unfortunate thing. Um, we'll see. Otherwise, I'll get the real sous vide machine that we can you, get something You, you have a sous vide machine? I, of course I have a sous vide machine. Okay. I'm not always cooking on my Prusa. Um, so I plugged it in, but unfortunately it ain't doing nothing. Uh, okay, that's not a very good sign actually. Is there a power switch somewhere? Uh, maybe you ah, have yeah, to... there is one. Okay. okay. It always helps. Oh, it always helps. Um, so we have a power switch right here. We have a network cable right here. And we have a USB, well, connector on that side. So. Let's switch it on and see if it... Mm. Yeah, it boots. It boots? Yeah. Shall we switch the camera? Yeah, maybe switch the camera for a second. Um, so concerning the materials, I would really like to go with the ABS material for today because I want to see how good it is able to print ABS and how good the charcoal filter works um, to filter out the fumes. And this is kind of booting ridiculous, ridiculously long. I mean, I don't know if we are supposed to like, maybe tap on the screen or something. But uh, it is still like... Maybe give it a second. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we got a bad preheat error again. Oh, damn it. So... Oh yeah, it makes sound. It has a speaker and lights. That's pretty awesome. So it's homing? It's quiet. Yeah. Can you see the screen pretty good or is the light reflecting? I think it's a, a bit too bright for the camera. Maybe put it like this. Yeah, I think that's better. Chuck Wheat is saying it's not real ABS. Um, why do you think it's not real ABS? Because it's saying eco ABS. Um, would be really interested in that. 
Um, so the front door is still miss. Uh, no, it's in no, there. it's it's yeah. right here somewhere. It broke. Okay. <laughs> it's a bit brown. Uh, just please tell us if you can see the screen. Um, pretty good. Be look, it has a, a leveling uh, assistant. I guess that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. At first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe let's take a look at the quick start guide. Oh yeah, we do have a, a quick start guide. Maybe let's. Take, Usually let's take nobody a look. reads the manual, yeah. but sometimes it might be a good thing to take a look at the manual. Um. Yeah. Do you think we have to clean the bed because it looks pretty? Um, I think this is all glue stick. Well. We'll clean it anyway. Just give don't me forget it. first calibrate it. Yeah, I think that's what we have to do right now. So uh, building out of the box, it says you can print from on printer storage USB flash drive and printing Q. It has a Q. That's good. But I mean, do you need a Q? You have to remove the part before you continue. But um, yeah. maybe the print head can knock off the part. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you can like the bed is removable, pretty easy. So you can have multiple beds maybe and like accelerate your like build time or. But you know, I then, don't. Yeah, that's quite quite nice, especially if you're working at higher temperatures, because then you can just take out the print platform, um, even though it's still warm, pop in a new one, and uh, well, continue printing right away. The right clip is not snapped in. It isn't. Are you oh, sure? Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Um, so the quick start guide actually does not say anything about calibration, but I think we should level the bed. Yeah. Just, just, um, just um, that we know how it works. Does it? So let's start. Okay. Level. What I do like it is very silent. There is a leveling switch in. The Ooh! It has a leveling switch. Oh, what the hell? It did it actually extend yeah. that? It just extended that leveling switch. Holy. <laughs> this is pretty cool, actually. There is actually a servo included, which, uh, well, which just popped out the uh, leveling switch. That's cool. I like that. Well, let's go back to the display. Yeah, ensure leveling switch is free of glue and residue. Yeah, that looks fine. So we have... That's pretty clever. Yeah, I think I think that's really clever. Okay, so I, I really like the sound it makes. It feels, it, it feels it, 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 um, if you if you hear the machine, it feels pretty rugged. It feels like a solid machine. Yeah, I like it. So I that, like that. It's not overly loud, and I think if we also add um, like the front cover, it will be even uh, quieter. Yeah, definitely. So look at that. It now levels the bed. Verifying that the bed platform Ooh. is level. It says on the screen. Now it retracted the... Oh, it is coming ah, out That's again. pretty cool, actually. That is really cool. Can you see that? Okay, um, so turn left to rise. Ah, okay, so it tells me that I... Ah, no. Ooh. Oh, wow, it, it kept the switch over there. This is really cool. Ah, it's actually telling you what to do. That's pretty cool. I'm super impressed. <laughs> now it rejected it again and goes to the other side. <laughs> I like that. Okay. So it tells you exactly which thumb you have to um, rotate. In which direction? In which direction, and then it beeps once the, the switch kind of um, sensors the build platform. Leveling is complete. That was pretty easy. This is super cool. Do you have any 3D model ready for prints? Uh, I have nothing ready, but I would just print a 3D Benchy, I guess, for the moment, because that yeah. is yeah. Um, just good to compare then the quality. Uh, the question is, which slicer are we going to use? I think it's probably the best thing to uh, I don't want to connect that at the moment to my network because I have to make sure that everything is working there. Um, I would just propose that we download the 
um, Dremel software, yeah. try out that slicer, put that with a thumb drive into the machine and then see how it works. Um, does it tell us in here where we can get... Ah. I could like download the software while you are inserting some filament. Maybe the screen is reacting to that or... Yes. Does it say where we can get the software? Attach it to the network. Do we actually have to do that? I don't think so. I, I don't think that we have to attach it to the network. Um, I will do that later. Ah, desktop slicing software. Yeah, I will. Uh, Dremel3D.com. So oh, it, you, or it is on the USB flash drive. Where is. did you put it? Uh, I'll just, I would suggest it? that we download the latest version. Okay, I can do that. Okay, and we will insert some filament. Um, can you? Yep, you want a Sorry. different camera? Ah, uh, well, let's keep the first camera for the moment. Um, So I will unpack the roll of filament. <laughs> Chuck, thank you for thank you for the info. Uh, Dremel website website about Eco ABS, a modified version of PLA that offers the same high detail finish, but with added strength and durability. So it's probably one of these um, tough. PLAs, um, so I think we won't stick to the Eco ABS because this is not hard to print. Um, so I would go with the nylon. Um, I hope it does not screw up the internet connection because it has 100 megabytes. So let's see. Uh, I, I mean, it's downstream and I we are using gig. downstream, but <laughs> whatever. Okay, there's a Cura profile. Where are you from? We are from the southern part of Germany, actually. Krauts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, Michael. Finally, 50,000. Yeah. Just 50,000 more to, more to go and I finally get my uh, silver play button. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, have to. <laughs> Don't have to uh, be happy with that all the time. Okay. Um, so what I did now, can you maybe change the camera angle? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I have opened the black nylon from Dremel. I don't know if you can read. No, yeah, that's probably better. It's a bit overexposed. Yeah. Um, the reason for that is, is that um, printing PLA is not a problem. I want to see how it can handle nylon. Okay, um, back to the big camera again. Okay, so um, Jack Weed is also <coughs> just point, uh, also currently pointing out that the um, Dremel DigiLab software is oh, just yeah. a new um, graphical user interface for Cura. So there's still Cura in the background. So maybe you want to you want to show the door. There is actually a door that covers your filament. I and mean, I, I think it's just for optical reasons. Uh, you need to change the camera angle. Oh, that's <laughs> um, that's helpful. Well, it's there's one thing. It's for um, just like how it looks. But on the other side, the filament is in your machine, so it's warmer in there. It it doesn't pick up moisture that fast. Um, and there is no air going into the printer, which helps you with uh, elevated oh, yeah. temperature in yes, the pr you know, yeah, sure. print, cham print chamber. So you open it. Which is also all plastic, by the way. Yep. Um, Some side cutters. Okay. What uh, are you going to print? I think we are printing a Benchy. Yeah. Um, the question is, well, a Benchy always takes a while. Do you guys have any suggestions for, for prints for the moment? Maybe we'll go with a Marvin or something like that, which doesn't take two hours of your time. Why don't we print the CNC kitchen logo? I think we t were talking about that in a, a couple of streams ago yeah. and you promised actually to prepare a logo. Well, I actually have a new logo, but <laughs> I uh, didn't prepare that for the stream. And it's it's hard to judge the printing quality with just printing a logo. Benji is good, good to compare. That is true. But I don't think um, we will 
Do you think we will print the entire bench sheet on the stream? Uh, we'll see. So we have something to eat uh, for a second, and if you guys get bored, uh, if you guys get bored, yeah, we we can stop the stream or something like that. Um, XYZ calibration cube. I am not a huge fan of um, calibration cubes because, um, in my opinion, they don't give you really the results that you are aiming towards. Benchy half size, yeah, then it's kind of hard to compare the uh, the print quality. Cat is pointing out printer vase. Vase mode is also pretty interesting. Uh, it's pretty boring in my opinion because it usually works with everything. Um, uh oh, uh oh, oh. Okay. Uh, did it say something when you inserted the? Because it has a filament button. Yeah. What, what does it actually? Let me switch your camera. Yeah. Okay. Uh, these are just for th this is just the printing profile, profile. So, um, change filament. I want to change the filament. Yeah, I did that. What does it say? Is it speeding? Um, it just told me that I had to cut the filament, but that's already cut. So now it's heating up the nozzle that we can extract the that we can extract the remaining material. Okay, so one thing now is we have this forty millimeter fan in here. Yeah. yeah. And that is a bit nasty loud. I don't like that. But yeah, we'll see how loud it really is if everything is closed. Yeah, you want to close it and try it out? Or can we actually close the front cover because of the... Yeah, I think we just have to bend that back into place. Let's see. Question is how I can install. Yeah, you have to bend it. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, it's. I guess it's fine now. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it's a bit better, but you can still hear this nasty noise. But I mean, if you compare the entire noise with some of the other printers it is it's still fine, I think yeah. it is still a bit quieter okay so I got the software ready <clears throat> um, which one do we actually have uh, maybe let's change the camera angle C can can you just have that for a second sure um, okay so you should be able to see the screen now. and yes it is absolutely looking like Hira. yeah so we have the dremel 3d45 oh it does something oh it's extruding the filament but why is it extruding the filament uh you feed have to feed, feed the to filament, feed filament. Oh, let me switch the camera again so it is actually extruding the old material that it had inside or what is it doing? Yep. So what I am doing now is I'll just insert new material in here. Uh, the doors are not sealed. They are just are they even attached with them. I think they are attached with a magnet, but they um, are not sealed. That's I think that's yes. something you could actually do on your own if you want to. Yeah. So is it is it like purging the material or what is it doing? It's purging the material. Let's open the door. You want to remove the door again? Uh, I think we can't remove it anymore because I bent everything back into place. <laughs> okay, it says feeding filament, that's fine. And now we just let some of the filament extrude until we are sure that um, all of it is um, nylon. 
Um, those filters are kind of useless with the gaps between the doors. I don't think so because the, fil uh, the fan is pulling out the air from the printer to the outside. So in the worst case, it is sucking fresh air from the outside into the unit and not like uh, pushing it out of the printer. So I think that's gonna be okay. Yes, um, the, the I, air has to come somewhere. It, yes, you know, it has. I, I it think it's totally there. fine. Okay, so it's getting back into position. I'll take the rest of the material out. And um, it recognized, it recognized that it's nylon and I'll accept that. Okay, perfect. And by the way, we will try to feed filament that is not from Dremel, but I don't think we have a spool in that size. Because no. Because it looks a bit smaller. Yes, we don't. And I, I'm not sure if you can, we can try that again uh, later on, maybe to just put a filament roll next to the printer and feed it and see if it's like, if it's possible or not. It may, it may say that there's no filament inserted, but. Um, yes, sorry. Um, so, it, I, I think I have read that this has an open filament system. So I'm positive that it is able to do it. Um, I'll probably put that in the review afterwards. Um, I think we'll now try to just print a part and see how it turns out. Remove the sticker, please. Um. We've now already inserted the material, so I, I think it's fine for the moment. Um, let's maybe take a look at the software again. Yeah. Okay, so what we have right here is um, like the Cura interface. Uh, I select the Dremel 3D45. I add the printer. Um, I don't want to connect it to the network for the moment. We'll just put it on a thumb drive. Oh, it has Wi-Fi also? Does uh, it have Ethernet? It has it Ethernet. Just... Oh, that's uh, that's I don't, good. I don't know if it has Wi-Fi. Uh, I'll need it, to it check said, that I think it said Wi-Fi. Okay. But, yeah. But did oh. you connect it via USB, actually? It's uh, not connected right now. It is not connected at the moment. So I will select, select nylon as a material because that's on the that's inserted. Um, I'll just use medium quality just for the sake of time. The question, the big question now is what we are going to print. I would stick to the Benchy, actually. Okay, let's just start the Benchy and see how that turns out. Um, okay, one of, one of the commenters says that um, it just looks like a normal printer with an enclosure around. Yes, probably. Um, I can't judge that for the moment. I think the removable print bed is nice, the filter is nice in the back. And they are aiming towards schools and the educational market, so you don't want to have like children putting their hands yeah. when they're where they are moving parts and, and someone said it has, even has a sensor in the front door or in the both of the doors Ah, okay yeah so i'm not sure if it's i, I think it's well, why would he lie but <laughs> i think it makes sense like like i said in the educational market where people could stick their fingers in there or whatever it's good to have a door with a sensor yes uh let me just load I mean, the overall impression of the unit is pretty good, even though it is 100% plastic. Um, I wouldn't call it a, an, an uh, I wouldn't call it a disadvantage actually with this printer because it's very thick. It is the unit is actually very heavy, and uh, yeah, it, I mean, uh, it feels good. The parts are pretty heavy. I mean, the only thing is that we broke, or I don't know if we broke. But I, I guess this this was already was broken. broken before. Yeah. yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> and once again, this is not a, this is not a new unit. This was already used by somebody else, and I also have to unfortunately give it back afterwards. Um, I just wanted to give you the satisfying moment when we remove the sticker right here that is in the front. Let's see if that's. Oh no! Oh yeah. See if that's peeling good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't leave any any uh, that's debris behind. 
That's nice. No, not so far. But look, it's war. As far as I can tell, the plastic screen is already pretty scratched. So this will be something that's maybe not going to be as good. So I yeah, this, that's, but that's usually the problem I think yeah. with the acrylic enclosures. Yes, and this is not a part. This is not a you know a removable piece of acrylic. Um, I I don't know. Do you think you can order this front door from Dremel? Yeah, but it's probably going to cost you as much as a new printer. <laughs> Um, okay, yeah, let's go back into the software. So I have loaded a bench in here. Um, I don't want to generate any supports. Build plate adhesion is probably good since we are printing yeah. nylon. Oh, did you put any, any glue on there? Um, no, not yet. I'll do that in a second. Let's just see how long that's printing. One hour. One hour, five minutes. I think that's that's fine for the stream. Yeah. Okay, so let me just get a thumb drive. You don't want to try the USB connection? Uh, well, I mean, why shouldn't it work? So? I, you mean directly print yeah. from Cura? Uh, well, I don't like that since we then have to be connected oh, yeah, we all tethered, the time. Tethered to Cura. Uh, what do you? The stick is in here, I think. Yeah, I'm thinking about if I want to put that into my printer. Why not? Um, because. I don't know who already used it before. Oh, you are afraid of spyware? <laughs> I'm I'm afraid of being a Bitcoin miner in the future <laughs> or some, how do you say, ransomware? Ran yeah, ransomware. Like, like these uh, encrypting things. Um, handsomeware. Handsomeware. <laughs> I'll, I'll just use, uh, may, can you go back to the big camera? Mm, yep. Um, I'll just use my um, USB card adapter and put it on the thumb drive that I also use in my in my CR10. Okay. So let's delete the files that were on there and let's just save that to the removable drive. And that's it. Let's see if that if that was really that simple. Okay. Um, I'll take the thumb drive. Uh, I don't think Dremel has published USB drivers for the cable connection. I'm not sure because once uh, I installed the software, it asked me if I want to install Arduino drivers, and I guess. That is the um, USB to serial uh, chip driver uh, that is uh, in there. Yeah. Bernie is asking, is it Wi-Fi enabled? I am not 100% sure at the moment, but if anyone can check the Dremel site and tell us, I'd be happy. <laughs> okay, um, so in order to prepare for the first print, I'll add some glue stick on the heated bed that everything sticks well. The good yeah. Bison stick. Name brand uh, glue stick. Oh, did it cool down? Oh, yeah, uh, oh, sure. We, yeah. we didn't start anything. Yeah. But it's actually a new one. It is? Yeah. They, they, didn't, they didn't save a dollar there. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe that was a little bit too much. I don't... I, I never actually printed this way. I did never... Um, I never printed with a glue stick. I didn't even have the glass surface so far. Um, I really love the 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 kind of you know the Prusa. How is it called? The like, PEI. Um, no, the the black one. The like it is. Ah, you um, mean the ultra base? I yeah, I think so. And when you put that on a, on a sheet of um, steel, like spring steel, uh, this is the best pl uh, print platform I have seen so far. So. No glue. No glue. Why no glue? It said put on the quick start guide said um, put glue onto the machine. Maybe not for yeah. nylon. Um, it prints on clean mirror and sticks perfectly. Um, let's just see if it works like that and otherwise yeah. I'll just clean yeah. it off. So. 
I guess we're gonna close this right here. We're gonna close the lid and second camera. Um, I guess it's build. And then we say. Do you see file names or? Yeah, it says right here 3D, 3D Benchy. Tells me not the nozzle temperature, the build platform temperature, and I can just hit build. Copying file. Oh, that's ah. cool. It's probably copying that locally, so you yeah. could remove the thumb drive yeah. after that. Prepare it for another print or something. Yeah. That's cool. Ooh, it's and it's doing its level, leveling routine again. <laughs> so for the guys who just um, joined us in the stream, it has a little switch on the extruder unit which it can retract and extend via a servo motor to um, kind of look how the bed is level. And it also it's also part of the automated or guided leveling uh, you know mechanism. Yeah. I'm quite interested to see how long it will take um, the print platform to get up to the 80 degrees Celsius because this is this is a bit. What do you think of the quality of the kinematics so far? I am very impressed. It is quiet. It's not shaky. No. Um, I think I think the quality is pretty decent. Even though many parts also from the uh, mechanics are made out of plastic. But I don't see any disadvantage in this machine right here. Um, there were some kind of weird noises in the back, so at the z-axis. Um, I don't know if this is just too much like lubrication on there or if actually some of the ball bearings are bad. Um, but we might be able to see that in z-bending or something like that if, if there is anything broken. And by the way, as we said before, um, this machine already was used by some other people. Yeah. We are not the first guys starting the machine. So actually we do not know um, the noise maybe are even, we don't know if they are like from the machine or because somebody used it before. Yes. So um, somebody was asking for the print speed and I just got back into Cura again and it's printing at 60 millimeters a second. 120 millimeters for the travel moves. 250 viewers. That's pretty awesome. We we already were at 260 something. Yeah. So we are still waiting for the machine to preheat, but actually, ah, it is preheating the bed. It is not preheating the nozzle. Yeah, probably to prevent um, um, like oozing of the nozzle. Yeah. Oh, I need to drink something. The sous vide prusa is actually working good again, so I'm quite happy. I, I think once the water reaches a certain temperature, the thermal run, run out uh, mechanism is not kicking in again. Yeah. We are actually now even actually a little bit over temped, but yeah, I, I think our the thing that is in there will be s still fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So the speeds are very adjustable, yeah. I don't know if you should go any faster with it, if you will get ringing artifacts and something like that. Um, what about using a tuned mass damper to offset 3D printer resonances? Well, this is actually something, a disadvantage of having an extruder with the servo motors and all that stuff in there is that you got a huge mass which you are turning around all the time. That's one of the advantages from the Bowden type extruder. That you, it did you have a very light extruder actually. But you have the disadvantage that the extrusion system is just more compliant because yeah. you always have to push all of the material that is in the Bowden, Bowden tube into the printhead. If you guys are interested in more discussions on that topic, tune in to the Melt Zone podcast that I'm doing together with uh, Thomas Sanladerer. Um, there will be links in the description later, um, but just Google for the Melt Zone podcast. Um, it's a bi-weekly po podcast. Um, you guys are going to enjoy it. It is a direct drive printer. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's true. 
Finn, thanks for the uh, congratulations. <laughs> it it has actually been kind of to the day, two years that I started YouTube. I think I have created my YouTube account on the 27th of December 2016, 15, 16 I, I think, 16 yeah. And I've uploaded my first video just some days after New Year's. So I guess, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with um, the... Yeah, I'm pretty sure you will reach 100,000 subscribers in no time, so... Um. And I will, well, I will probably have some more time for doing YouTube videos next year. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, work is keeping me really busy at the moment or my normal work, but there will be some changes and I'm really looking forward to next year. So the unit is still preheating, but I'm not sure because the bed looks like it is actually to it's, temp. It's at 77 degrees Celsius. Okay. So let's maybe give that. Let's maybe show the screen once, once more, one more. And now the, now the fan is kicking in again. So they start to heat up the nozzle. So the bed is at um, 97 at the moment and the nozzle is at 100. What do you think, how long is the food gonna take? The until food, we... well, the food is ready, I think. It is ready? I think as soon as we have made sure that the print is sticking and it's running, um, we'll prepare some food. And I'm looking forward to that, to that because I did not have any Thanks. dinner so far. Yeah, me too. It's not too much, but it's gonna be something really tasty. JJCC. It doesn't have good ABS capabilities. I'm still carrying around a four-year-old keychain I made on an enclosed printer and it's still strong. So I guess this is really one of the advantages of that printer and why I'm really looking forward to use that printer in the next couple of weeks. Um, the enclosure gives you the possibilities to print higher technical, higher technical um, polymers. So ABS should be no problem to print in there because the heat bed can go all the way up to 100 degrees Celsius. Nylon is not a problem. Polycarbonate should also be working because the nozzle can go up to 280 degrees Celsius. Um, but I will check that out. And as I said, this I think is the real purpose of that machine. Printing ABS, printing nylon, printing, printing the higher grade polymers mm -hmm. in comparison to only printing PLA. But it's preheating pretty long actually. It, it takes yeah. it takes a while to preheat. It takes a while. I'm quite sure that um, this is a tw uh, a 12 volt system. Um, no 24 volts in there yet. The Endo 3 heats faster. I think the Endo 3 actually has a 24 volt system in there, and I think this is really one of the advantages of the newer printers. Ooh. It is doing something. Yeah, it's doing something. Do you want to wipe over the screen? Yeah. Look right here. So there is nothing coming. Ah, yeah, there we go. So it's a bit squeaky. I don't know if these are the stepper motors or if there's... Probably these are the stepper motors. I think so. But... I mean, overall, it's still a quiet machine. Yeah. I don't think that we see something from the top there. Yeah, I'm just like looking at the mechanisms. So um, the, the I... first layer is pretty thin, but uh, better to have a first layer that is too thin than, than one that is too thick. I, I think uh, the reason for the first layer being too thin is that uh, the bed leveling was done when the printer yeah. was cold and now everything is, is expanding a little and you get... But this should actually be a feature to preheat the bed before you level it. 
right? I don't know. So why are, aren't they doing maybe, it? Maybe I have done it wrong in some way. You think uh, the glass surface is so prone to like, I don't think it is warping under heat that much. Well, it will expand a little bit, but the nozzle, the nozzle is brass as yeah, far yeah. as I have seen and the brass will expand over time. Okay. This almost makes no sound. I'm. Uh, How is the first layer? Um, Did it actually um, purge the nozzle before it started? Because I, the, like the starting cheat code, I think the Pusha does it right. So it it purges a little. I don't think that it purges. It purged something. Um, and this also caused some kind of a problem because there is some, well, loose filament next to the, to the brim of the print. But otherwise, it seems to be working. First layer is sticking. So, this is one thing, I think a disadvantage when having, having the doors with the sensors. I think if you open the door right now, it will pause. And I know by my, for myself that when I start printing something and I got loose filament or whatever, I can reach in there with some pliers and just you know remove them or something. That's nothing you can do with this printer. So when you start and the doors are closed, um, there's no chance for you reaching in there and like making a hot fix or something to your part. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's but this is actually the thing they're aiming for. If you have this thing in a school, you don't want the kids to touch the. 250 degree nozzle of course yeah sure but I mean that's just something you have to keep in mind and yes it has a, a camera inside which we should actually try out how um, do you, how do you uh, like view it you can access it uh, if it's connected to the network since yeah. it's not connected at the moment um, I can't ex uh, I can't access it but there will be a review of this unit coming and I'll talk about that in there You can open the door and press the limit switch, yeah. Is it not magnetic? So it has a switch? Um, shall we actually try out what's happening if I open yeah, the lid? Yeah, open the door. Let me point to the screen. Um, oh, it does nothing. Nope, keep sprinting. Caution door is open. It says caution ah, okay. door is open. It may stop after a couple of seconds, maybe. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we could actually remove that bit of material in there. That's good. And the first layer seems to be well. It's really looking good. Um, the question only is how I could adjust the camera angle in the way, in a way that uh, we can see it better. The door can remain open, it won't stop. So I think for the viewer, it's better on camera when we open the door because the glass is reflecting and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I'll pop that open. Yeah, I think that's better. <coughs> Should be fine. It's rocking around a little on the desk because not all of the three feet, four feet. Ah, yeah. Okay. Now we are better. You can X out the warning. Okay. So is there anything we can do on the screen while it is printing? So like, I don't know. Um, what does it say? So it's currently saying... Is there the remaining time? Um, what I can see right here is the remaining time of the print. That's one hour, two minutes. I can pause the print, I can stop the print, and I can probably adjust settings like the nozzle. No, I can't. Um, so you cannot adjust um, the overall speed. Like on some printers, you can go to 105% extrusion or whatever. Yeah. You are not able to make any adjustments. I don't know if it could pause the I don't, print. I don't, people can see that, actually, what you are doing. Oh, okay, because it's behind the camera. Maybe go back to the second camera. Which is also not pointing to the screen. Yeah, well, it's not pointing to the screen, but... No, it doesn't give me that much options. Well, I need to see, maybe it's possible to do that when um, it's connected to the network. And yeah, there, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yeah, 
yeah we already said before that um, there's actually a camera on the inside um, that is fine you, so you I think I have actually read that it will send you like a time-lapse of your print to your email address after a print is finished or you could actually uh, do that So, concerning the noise, it's okay. It's not as loud as as a CR10. It's well, kind of on the same noise level as my uh, as my Pusa. So I really like that. Is the fan running in the back? Uh, the fume extraction no, it's unit. Actually, it's actually not running. <laughs> okay. Why is it not running? Um, I don't know if this is maybe a setting, but I will need to check that out. It's not. It's not well, really it should be able to detect the filament um, with the RFID tag, and then it, if, at least if you ask me, should be able to um, start based on the material you have inserted. Yeah, I would assume that it should be running all of the time. Um, but yeah, somehow it's not working at the moment. Maybe it's just a setting, I don't know. Maybe after the stream I'll also well go into the settings and just reset everything that yeah. it's... I think that, that would be something we should have done maybe yeah. to get to this um, factory default. Yes. What I do like is that they have a light in there and of course they do have it because of the webcam. But I think even because it's, it's fully enclosed, you know, you need you need to see something. Yeah. And it's, well, it's kind of nice because um, you'll get the same exposure all of the time for the camera, or mostly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it just looks cool. The time lapse will be better yeah. with the same exposure. So, what do you think? Um, what do you actually do, do not like about the printer? <sighs> well, the, the doors and everything, they are nice, but due to them being acrylic, they will just attract um, fingerprints and dust and everything so it will not look as nice yeah. over the course of time um, the filament system with the proprietary rolls that are also smaller than standard ones is not that nice because I think I cannot add a normal standard sized um, 750 or 1 kilogram spool in there it would be interesting if the machine remembers the filament, like if it reads the RFID tag, it knows it's nylon, it knows how much it is. But like if you would reuse the spool for a different material, mm -hmm. if the printer maybe knows the serial number and is aware of that the spool is empty already, you know? <laughs> like like should, with the it should be. Uh, printer uh, with the ink cartridges. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I mean, it, it has to remember it because yep. when you insert it, it, it has to it, it has to have a lookup table or something yep. that it knows how much filament is remaining on the spool. I well, I think uh, they only use it as a beneficial feature, and they are not like uh, pushing you into using their materials. So, mm. if there's not a, a spool in there which is from Dremel, which doesn't have an RFID tag, similar to the Ultimaker printers, it will just say, "Okay, no filament detected. Choose a suitable preset." Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess it's fine there. So the print looks nice. I think it has already lifted a bit from the build platform. And yeah, we'll see. Is it possible to resume the print after a power outage? Um, we don't know. We do not want to try right now. Um, yes, uh, Stefan said he will make a dedicated review of this printer. And I don't know, maybe this will be one of the features. Well. I'll see if I find something about that in the manual and then I'll try it out. If there's nothing in the manual, I'll, I assume that it doesn't recover if um, the power is lost. We don't have that many power, no, out no. power outages here no. in Germany. Not so really. It's <laughs> not a feature you would really need yeah. here. True tech, yeah, you could just also use um, 
uninterrupted yeah. U USB? A USB? 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 US USB? I think it's USB. Unterbrechungsfreie Stromversorgung. Uh, uninterrupted I'm not, I'm not power sure. um, source. <laughs> <laughs> And that is what actually is in some of the new printers. Um, some of them, which I have seen, is that they actually include a small LiPo battery in there that um, the UPS, UPS yes, uninterrupted power, power supply. supply. Um, Probably. USB is actually a German term yeah. for it. Um, and some like, I think the Prusa printers just has like some kind of bigger caps in the in the power supply that it can provide power for like a second after the power went out so yeah. if it directly turns out the heated bed and the heated nozzle it has still enough power remaining to power the board and yeah. the stepper motors it's kind of just triggering um, the internal mechanism for storing where it exactly stopped and um, yeah I don't know do you think it does it retract the material or something to Prusa? Um, or does it just you know uh, write into the memory where it left and uh, triggers the? I think it just um, well moves away from the object you are printing that you don't get a big blob yeah. and melt everything in ah, that yeah, direction. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, and it just saves the z height where you have been at. Okay. Uh, Jan is uh, just saying that little loop of loose extrusion is driving me gra crazy. Yeah, I'm s I'm sorry, but I maybe I can reach that. I think you can open the uh, upper lid also. Yeah. Let's take some pliers. That all my viewers are happy. No. <laughs> it's not working. Do you need a knife? You want to cut it? I have some other pliers. Yeah, there you go. It would be funny if you actually lifted the entire part, so. <laughs> but that's also a nice feature that the build platform is only moving in C, is that you can do stuff like that. If you have a printer that moves the bed in X or Y, um, it's you kind of have a hard time removing the uh, filament loop. So you see the bench is already partly done. Um, the interesting thing is the Bowden tube that we have back right here in the back right here. It's interesting to see that they did not use the standard Bowden tube um, with a two millimeter internal diameter. This has more. I think this is the like three millimeter internal and 4.5 on the outside. Mm. But that's not bad because this is just for guiding the material on the inside. Since this is a direct extruder, uh, the extrusion motor is in here. So um, it's not affected by that. And that just helps you um, work with materials that have kind of a higher diameter than they are supposed to. Yeah, so the print head is fully enclosed. Everything is in there. It is connected via this uh, flat flex cable here in the back to the software. That is kind of nice. Yeah. The configuration is, tell me guys, is it an H board or a Core XY? I think it's an H board, as we have figured out before. It, it smells a little bit, but not too bad, to be honest. Let's close that back again. It does make a difference in uh, the loudness of the printer to close it. Yeah. Yeah, well, as said before, the uh, air outlet fan is actually not running, so I don't know yeah. why. Uh, Martin is asking, does it use glue? Yes, I have applied glue stick to the print surface. The print surface is just a piece of glass. So um, I guess for many materials you should use something like glue stick, magic goo, a printer fix, or um, whatever suits you best. Alex, it's the MakerBot style movement system. Yeah, but how is it called? Is it HBot?
where is the Y motor located? Does it actually have two? Um, the Y motor. The Y motor is located back here. The X motor is actually on the X axis. So is it driving the entire thing just from one side? It's, yeah, driving that thing from one side, but it has, I think, a synchronization. Does it have a synchronization? You want me to I check can it. hold the camera. I, I think that's fine. I'll just go to the other side and see if I can take a look at the inside. <laughs> Hmm. I do not know. Oh. So, um, the two sides are synchronized. I can feel a belt okay. right there. Oh, that's good. So they have a connection rod or something? Because only um, one, there's, there's one step There's probably a connection rod right here in the back that drives both sides. Okay. Is the white driving belt? No, this is actually just the reflection you see on the uh, linear rail. It's working pretty nicely. Yeah, I'm I'm super impressed actually. Yeah. And it's nylon, it's, that's not PLA what we're printing. Uh, what did it uh, um, bring the bed to 80 degrees? Um, it's 80 degrees, it's 80 degrees on the bed, it is 255 degrees on the nozzle. The, n <coughs> the nozzle can go all the way up to 280 degrees, so I suppose it's an all metal hot end. Exactly. Um, one thing which I have seen which I don't like about the printer is that they are using a brass nozzle. Um, so I have said before that I would like to use this printer as a printer for um, higher technical materials which also includes filled filaments. So this has a brass nozzle so you shouldn't print any carbon filled materials on there, you shouldn't print any glow in the dark filaments in there because <clears throat> this will wear out the nozzle and um, well basically ruin the printer and since this is mm. like a specific nozzle probably dremel designed yeah um i don't know how hard it is to get i'll really need to check that out because i would like to see this machine with a hardened steel nozzle that you can print um filled filaments in there i will check if you can get Replacement, like you have to get replacement. You parts. can probably check Konrad because oh, Konrad yeah. is selling the Dremel printer. Eric, has the has the giveaway happened yet? No, the give, a giveaway hasn't happened yet because there is no giveaway. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I might be doing something for the uh, 50,000 subscribers thingy. I have something nice prepared for for us to eat here um i just wanted to hang out with all of you guys because this is kind of a a milestone moment for myself uh which i have been working towards for the well last two years it has finally happened and it's going great at the moment yeah whatever um, I didn't find the replacement parts. I'll ask Dremel if <coughs> replacement parts are available. Yeah, 50,000 subscribers, but you are actually del delivering like the con you, you put a lot of effort in every video because you're you know you're seriously researching stuff or pointing stuff out, and it, this is not something every YouTuber does. And I mean, it's more than uh, great that you get the feedback in terms of like you now 50,000 subscribers. It's I mean. Yeah, 50, it's well deserved. It's a thank you. So the thing is, besides Thomas Sanlada or Tom, um, there weren't many really technical 3D printing out there when I started two years ago. And I thought, okay, 
I'm interested in that because I'm an engineer and I want to use 3D printing in an engineer way. So um, I thought, yeah, why not create YouTube videos and share that information? I, I just gathered myself and analyzed yeah. myself yeah. Uh, on the internet because there are others around who are also interested in that stuff. I'm not the only engineer who is a little bit weird. Um, so we have 50,000 already, that's great. And um, yeah, it's, it's steadily growing. This is the nice thing. It seems to have, it seems to be a steel wear resistant nozzle available. So you might be able to buy your own um, replacement parts. Oh, Jan, thanks, thanks for the link. So um, Jan just pointed out that mm, Micro Swiss is selling hardened nozzles for the um, for the Dremel for the Dremel printer that will enable you to print with um, with filled uh, filaments on that machine. Made out of A2 tool steel. Yay! That should last a bit longer than the brass nozzle. Yeah, but taking a look at the nozzle. So maybe let's just put that on the other screen. Top. Um, taking a look at this picture and the well, the like step we have in here, it looks almost as if this is not a um, full metal hot end, and a Bowden tube goes way in here. I probably need to check that out as soon. Um, but it says you can go up to 280 degrees. Yeah, so um, you shouldn't go up to 280 degrees if the um, if the Teflon tube goes all the way into the nozzle. This is actually even um, plated. This is nice because that um, just removes or reduces um, friction in the nozzle. The interesting thing is that it's made in the in the U.S. by Micro, Micro Swiss. Swiss. <laughs> I I would have assumed that uh, Micro Swiss uh, is Swiss. <laughs> they even have a Swiss logo. So yeah. <laughs> do you think they have a look hot ends? Probably only sell the nozzles for that yeah, printer. Yeah, I think so. But it's it's good that um, that they are doing that, and I think it shows that. Um, there have been other ones just like me that are thinking about using this printer for um, 3D printing carbon fiber materials. <laughs> Micro USA is made in the Switzerland. Um, 3D printing fin. You also said something about Echo ABS, but this was really nylon and not Echo uh, Eco ABS. So we are currently printing nylon in that machine. The Eco ABS that Dremel is selling is actually modified PLA, so tough PLA, which just mimics like the behavior of um, ABS, but is not really ABS. Um, so there isn't, I guess, any real ABS material for that machine sold by Dremel but I'll definitely try out if I can print ABS with that machine because this is the purpose I want to well I want to use that machine for yeah. printing ABS printing ASA printing nylons printing polycarbonates uh, everything that is nasty uh, which is maybe partly filtered out by the fan in the back um, and that needs a heated build chamber Do you think it's going to be suitable for, it should, for flexible materials? Um, it, because it's a direct drive extruder? It is type? a direct drive extruder. Um, I will try it out. Um, I don't have any real flexibles right here. I only have um, polypropylene, in polypropylene PP right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will try printing PP with that printer and I think, well in my opinion polypropylene is a really nice replacement to uh, flexibles because flexibles just always pick up moisture, are nasty to, to print and PP has great properties, it's also really soft and um, I love the hinges you can make with yes, the PP. Yes, the living hinges, yeah. they are great. Yeah. Christopher, thank you. 
I always thought these hinges were nothing you could do on a 3D printer. It, it wouldn't actually before uh, they had PP. Uh, you cannot do it with ABS or PLA or whatever. Yeah, because the thing is, once the um, the modulus of the material is really low, so it it will not um, it will not yield even though you are bending it quite away. And the fatigue resistance of that material is so great. So yeah. even if you like plastically deform it, yeah. it will still um, not break after a couple of uses, like with ABS. So if you have yeah. ever bent an ABS part and you see the color turning from turning. whatever it was before to white, yeah. this is one of the problems you have there. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and yeah, by the way, we got a heating disabled by safety timer. Oh damn it! But it should be done now. So I guess we will eat something. You want to start? What yeah. does it say? How much uh, remaining time? Uh, because it had a uh, counter. Uh, Forty-eight minutes. I Still? think it is not very precise. I think that's what I. Because it, do you think it's halfway through? Probably. It's not halfway through, but and not we in have terms already of the of the Z height, but maybe in terms of the extruded material. Yeah, maybe. Um, hello back to India. Hello back to India and thanks for the congratulations. Um, TS3D prints, he really likes the poster in the background. This one is from um, Unique. Looks pretty good, I didn't yeah, see it before. I also really like it. Um, there was another question from Jason before, is the chamber actually heated? It is not actively heated, it's passively heated by the heat bed. So um, you cannot really set a temperature in there, but it will get warm over time during printing. Uh, yes, so the Banshee is already looking quite nice. It, it does not have, I think, the quality as you would see it with Printing PLA, but nylon is not the easiest material to print with, and I warm? think it's doing pretty good. Do you see? It? Is it lifting from the bed? Um, no, I think and it. By the it way, sticks pretty well. Uh, we did apply some glue stick, so just in case you don't know. Yes. Um, Paul, what CNC machine should I buy for a start? It always depends what you want to do. If you want to route. If you want to route uh, uh, wood, then most cheap uh, CNCs will do. If you want to uh, CNC metal, you have to spend a couple of bucks to get there. Yeah. And uh, if you want just want to do aluminum, you'll be fine with most of the machines. But if you want to make like your own parts made out of tool steel, yeah, that's not, not going to be cheap. Then you will even well, you will need a real CNC mill and not a CNC router. Uh, but you can talk about the machine you you just got. Well, yeah, I have a um, Go CNC um, in my basement. I unfortunately haven't used for the last couple of weeks, but there will there are some projects plans with it. But as I said, um, time is currently the limiting factor. It's a nice machine. You can also well check out the live streams where I. You, well, I, where I built it and there are two videos on my channel where I used it to um, CNC aluminum parts um, And I have just recently released a video on my wooden CNC router that might also be interesting for some of you because you don't have to Spend that much. It's maybe a hundred or two hundred bucks for all of the parts and uh, You don't need special tools because everything is wood. So yeah Just uh, check that video out ways to convert a pressure washer into a cutter and I if I recall that correctly I think I saw a video on applied science yes uh, um, he I think he actually made a um, pressure washer cutter yes check out applied science maybe someone can post the link into the um, into the comments applied science a channel you should definitely subscribe to okay. uh, made a DIY power washer um, cutter which was working quite well yeah but I mean it's an enormous like project because you need the sand you need to feed the sand and you know I think you need have water the, the thing everywhere. is you need yeah water everywhere and you need the wear resistant parts because that sand will wear out your nozzle yeah. as well and not yeah. only cut the part yeah so you need tungsten or tungsten carbide parts um, hardened steel 
uh, things, so that's not so easy to get. But I think he was talking about the parts he used. He may even be talking about the nozzle he used. I think he ordered yep. it, and it's not very cheap, the mm -hmm. nozzle. Um, yeah. All right, I am, I am getting a bit hungry. So, um, uh, message rejected. Uh, wait a second, guys, maybe the, your comments are moderated out. Let's see if I can get them back in there. Ah. Message deleted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's. A, I think that's a link to the video. Yeah. Ah, uh, thanks, Jay. <laughs> I just checked the message. Okay. Uh, just. Give me one second. Um, I'll be back in a second yeah, and sure. then we can get something to eat. Sure. So if I remember correctly, I think um, Hira said, yeah, one hour and five minutes. And of course, this is not very accurate. Now, I don't know if Hira is not accurate, but I'm not sure when we started to print, but I'm, I, I don't think it's gonna take an hour. So the only thing about the screen which I actually do not like too much is um, the brightness. It is not very bright. And I'm not sure it could also be just dependent on my on the angle with which I'm looking at. And again, we tried that before, but there are no um, no things except stopping and pausing the print, which you can do. Um, while printing, nozzle temp, yeah. The part looks great. I'm very curious to see the end result. Yeah, it's a little bit stringy, but that's just um, expectable with nylon. Um, the nylon I'm using right here is right out of the box, but it hasn't been dried um, before, so that could also help with the printing results. Any warping so far? I don't think so. Nope. It doesn't look. Uh, works. Sticks pretty well to the print platform. Okay, um, let's. So dinner, dinner time. Dinner time. Yeah. Um, while this is printing, maybe somebody else has already noticed right here in the back. Uh, the Prusser, the Prusa has already been uh, again been cooking some some great food over the last couple of hours. So, sorry to all the vegetarians out there. This will not be your favorite meal, I guess. No, I also don't think so, but um, yeah, just tune away for maybe 10 minutes and we'll be done with it. They are actually cooking, yes we are. Um, if anybody is curious, so what I made right here is a piece of picanha. Um, I guess it's a typical Brazilian food. Um, in Germany, we use that piece of meat more for making um, soups, but it's nice and fatty and oh, gorgeous. And it has been sitting in the sous vide bath for the last three hours at 55 degrees Celsius. So it should be perfectly, perfectly medium. Um, I'll sear it now and we will have something to eat. Uh, but yeah, just keep asking questions about the printer. Yeah, if Benjamin said he was not expecting cooking when I clicked on the stream. Uh, yeah, I, I think most of most of the people don't. And I am, I am actually, Every time I'm glad to be here again because I know Stefan is preparing something awesome in his uh, Prusa printer. So this is like a recurring theme right here on the on the channel. There is a reason why this is called CNC Kitchen. 
I really like to cook and I really like my, my good food. So we will be... How is the Dremel working? The, the Dremel is working fine, so we just take the time and, um, and make ourselves some dinner. So we have some fleur de sel, some, I guess it's from Mallorca. Add a bit on here. Maybe. Yeah, cook. let's let's put the camera aside because the flames are coming. And just that you know, we got a fire extinguisher in here. So yeah. So the thing is with um, sous vide cooking, um, the the meat is really soggy at the end, and you need to sear it afterwards. And this is what we are doing now. The print is fine. If anyone wonders. Salt is flying everywhere. Wow. <laughs> it was probably not the best idea to put some salt on there. Is it like, did you put the salt on there on purpose before? Uh, yeah, I did it, but it was it was a mistake. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the printer is directly next to our little cooking experiment here. And it doesn't look too jealous, actually. Yeah, I'm just a bit afraid that I... This looks fine for the first side just need to put something under under there that I don't damage my table Do we have a box? Just a box. Can you go to the main camera again? Yeah, sure. Uh yeah, the print is fine. Uh, we need to sear the second side now. <laughs> Meanwhile, RC Life on is printing chocolate. <laughs> yeah, chocolate is something for kids. Um, if anyone wonders, this is Picanha. Use the original CNC kitchen, the one and only T bone steak board. Oh, this is uh, is it stable? Like up well, I'll remove it. There. Okay. Um. The printer is still running, uh, if you guys are wondering. It looks a bit stringy. But otherwise, it should be fine. So is our meal. So is our meal, yeah. So if you guys also like some really nice snacks, don't forget to leave a like on the video. Ew. Oh, this looks great. This will be great. Well, let's maybe do it like this. Can you? This is perfectly medium. Totally juicy. Yeah. Ah, this is going to be great. Add some background piano, dinner theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, some Brazilian music. Uh, in Germany, we call that piece of meat um, Tafelspitz. And it's usually used for like just um, um, cooking soups, but um, and it's not that expensive. But you can 
make a really really nice steak with it and that's what I actually did um, I'll now just cut it into smaller sections that are nicely edible and we'll have ourselves some dinner oh, sorry you don't need to uh, you don't need to uh, eat the uh, fat by the way this is just for keeping everything nice and uh, juicy okay let's for everyone who's interested hey. that's the printer uh, let's add a little bit more salt so now you guys know why I am um, here I am here <laughs> when Stefan starts a live stream um, really? I am absolutely not into cooking at all it's nothing I can do no, I love but it. he's you know I think he, he's he cooks like, like mm. maybe two people combined let's see how is it yeah you actually missed the food clo close-ups um, just go a little bit back into the timeline mm. Mm. that's good oh my god as I said you don't need to eat the fat because it's really fatty Mm. The thing about picanha is that you have to cut it properly. I did not cut it perfectly, to be honest. Um, where do you have knife? Uh, wait a second. Um, but it has a really, really intense food flavor. Yes, it has. Uh, really intense beef flavor. Mm. And it's so juicy. Wow. Mm. Um, 56 degrees Celsius in the sous vide cooker for three hours makes it perfect it is perfect let me tell you mm. thanks very good okay maybe change to the second camera again you guys can yeah so there's the banshee growing That you don't need to see the fleisch fest for for too long. I'm sorry to all of the vegetarians, but um, yeah, I just love my food. Okay. Mm. Can you use a third-party slicer with it? I think yes, because we saw that they at least had Simplify 3D on their website. So I think it's open for every slicer you can find. It is. They actually use um, Cura for their own slicing. Um, so they just use standard G-code for um, for the printer. But I'll I'll check that out in the full review, which will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Perfect bin. That's perfect. Oh yeah. And the thing with uh, sous vide cooking is that uh, you you get your meat always to the perfect point, so it's not too well done. It's not too soggy. Um, the only problem is that it just comes out of out of the the bag really, like um, without any crust on the outside. So you have to you have to sear it all of the time, and that's what we did with the with the propane torch. Sliced with a Dremel uh, <laughs> with a Dremel tool. Yeah, we could have done that. in the kitchen fat is where the taste is yeah i understand but that's just too much simply barbaric probably it's a nude steak probably a nude steak on yeah. the perfect temperature for three hours holding time 
So the sous vide cooker or machine actually looks like a filament drying machine. Is it just a heated like um, plate where you put your? How is it? How the, how so is the it? the filament. Co um, so sorry, the filament. Um, the the sous vide machine I usually use is the Anova Anova sous vide stick, and it just looks like a submergible water heater, yeah. but it has a small propeller included. Okay and also well a temperature sensor so yeah, you yeah. set the exact temperature it will um like stir the water all of the time so that um, the temperature is distributed evenly yeah and it um controls it to the perfect point i haven't tried fish on the prusa yet but um that's not a problem at all so um Lux, what is lux in English? Um, salmon. Yeah. Salmon. I I uh, have often done salmon in a normal sous vide cooker. Yeah. This. All right. So dinner is finished. I could have another one. Yeah, or it two. was a bit small, um, but I did not sus sus suspect that. Um, it had that much fat. But we can have some more bolognese later, as soon as the <laughs> stream is finished. Even though the bolognese was not cooked on a 3D printer. So you did not use the heat bed to heat it. Uh, we did actually the last maybe hour on the heat bed. Well, actually it was on the heat bed for the last three hours. Oh, you only did it on here? I only did it on here, ah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I just filled a pot with uh, water that I brought up to like somewhere around 60 degrees Celsius, put the meat in a bag in there and used my submergible temperature sensor in the bath that is connected to the 3D printer and uh, set it to the proper temperature. Yeah, the magnetic bed unfortunately uh, doesn't work on the Prusa for stirring. Looks like it's air painting. Oh yeah, you're right. Damn it. It is. Yo, it it is actually air painting. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. So this means we have to start over again, and this also means we get another sous vide uh, <laughs> piece of meat. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, who was totally right? Uh, Jan was totally right. This was the first fail. It is actually air painting. Why is it air printing? That is really unfortunate. Um, so I guess there is nothing else to do than hit uh, stop for the moment. Are you sure? Yes. You. Okay, so somehow Somehow the material didn't extrude anymore. That is unfortunate. So you got a clog? I probably have a clog, but I don't know where it's coming from, to be honest. Um, Maybe connect it to Wi-Fi in the meantime. Uh, I'll connect it to Wi-Fi when, when I'm uh, all alone, because that's uh, just too much hassle with all of the passwords and everything. Um, yeah unfortunate so but this is why we do these unscripted live streams just to see what can go wrong so this is the build platform let's take it out and and this is the print that it did. It's oh, okay. It's removing pretty easily. So, so it you didn't, can didn't see stick too well. it's yeah, it's bowed a little. Mm -hmm. Um the outer surface looks kind of nice to be honest. Um it's shiny like peel uh, like like most of the other nylons. The thing is that you see lots of stringing in here. And at some point, it really stopped extruding, so we had a clock. Damn it. Um, I did not expect that. That's really unfortunate. Um, 
but that just concludes that I maybe need to tinker with that machine a little bit more until it works perfectly. Maybe the last reviewer made a little joke and just dumped in a grain of salt or something. Yeah, maybe. Into the extruder. I don't know. I don't think that it has something to do with our um, searing of the steaks, though. No. Um, Igor is telling the skirt shows that the bed was not leveled perfectly. Yeah, you're right there, and it's pretty thin. I mean, we, we did bed level the um, print bed with the assistant provided by the Dremel yeah. 3D printer. But, so the, we... but the leveling is done without the heated nozzle and without the heated bed. Um, so there could be something wrong there. But I will check that out um, Well, later on when I just um, play around with the machine. Okay. Um... Yeah, this is unfortunate, but I guess still a conclusion. Um, it's not working perfectly. I don't know if it's. I mean, I mean, you can have a clock, you know, in every three D printer. It's nothing. Like, um, it's it, it happens. Yeah. What do you want to do? I mean, the roll was like fresh. You just uh, put it out of the uh, plastic enclosure. So I think I don't think there's any debris on there. But you never know. I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, there could be could be some heat creep uh, in the nozzle. I don't know where this is coming from, but I'll check that out. Well, later, maybe tomorrow when I find the time to just get that running again. Um, so I think I won't be starting another print on there because we are we are already two, two hours over minutes. two hours in. Um, it is already getting late for us here in Germany at least for my uh, time sense um, but I would still like to conclude with some words on the machine so the machine came basically fully assembled um, the leveling process was was easy to do um, the removable bed is kind of nice it is fully enclosed but has the problem that the acrylic they use is just um, picking up dust and fingerprints and everything quite fast so it will not look as nice after a while as it did when it came um, out of the box. It has a print platform of the uh, 250 millimeters by I guess 50, uh, 150 millimeters by 170 millimeters so not the biggest one. Um, it's fully enclosed though, so uh, printing things like nylon and ABS should work in there. The print head itself is a direct extruder. Yeah, which single is, extruder, of course. Yeah, single direct extruder, which is kind of nice. Um, when everything is closed, the printer is not really loud. So this is nice if you want to have or if you want to use this thing in like an office environment. Um, they use their own proprietary rolls with NFC chips, but I don't think they lock you out with your own material. So you can use their material, which unfortunately only comes on 500 gram spo gram spo grams spools. Grams spools. Um, so you might need to use an external um, spool holder to feed your own filament in there. But I will try that out in a later review. Otherwise, yeah, the printer worked fine so far. It's it's nicely built. It's full uh, injection molded parts. It has a charcoal filter in the back. Um, with a fan that wasn't running. With a fan that wasn't running. So I need to check that if I can get that to work. Um, it uses Cura as their, with their own graphical user interface as a slicer. Um, you can use also Simplify 3D and also probably um, Slicer um, to get your G-code on the machine. You can also cloud slice with it. So there is a graphical user interface that um, is well run via your browser. Um, I haven't tried that so far. There's a camera included also for time-lapse videos. Um, and how else it will perform, I guess I'll find out in the next couple of weeks. I'm really excited to use that machine because I really wanted to have a machine that is enclosed where I can print things like nylons and, and ABS without the problem that, um, well, without the problem of, of warping of these open printers. Um, 
yeah, we'll see how that works. I think the overall, or overall first impression is pretty good, actually. It's good. It's unfortunately, uh, it's unfortunate that, that it did not work um, with the first print. Um, nylon is not an easy material to print with, so this could be one of the reasons. Um, but as I said, we, I think I'll find out later how it performs with things like ABS, PLA, PTG, uh, and maybe some uh, polycarbonates that I have around. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Vertigo, unfortunate man, grats on the 50k, thank you. Um, yeah, they claim 280 uh, degrees Celsius. I don't think you can. Do you can put in a, a Teflon liner at 280 degrees? You can, but it will degenerate. I, I need to see if it is an all metal hot end or if there is a piece of Teflon that goes all the way to the nozzle and they're just claiming the 280 degrees Celsius. How is this to weed? Well, it's, it's, it was great. It's in our tummies, it was great. Uh, unfortunately, it was over too fast. That's always the case. That's always the case. Um, you can get replacement nozzles for that printer from Micro Swiss or um, hardened nozzles so that you can also print um, filled filaments with it. But I have, I do not have some of them so far. Um, Igor says maybe drying the filament would help. Yes, uh, that's what I already said. Even though the filament is directly out of the bag, um, there's always the problem that nylon picks up moisture very fast and if you don't dry your nylon, uh, you will not be happy in the end. Mm. Um, yeah, 3D Gusner, just scroll back maybe 20 minutes and you will have the pleasure to see um, the finished result of sous vide cooking. Um, yeah, I guess what is left to say, please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed watching it. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are not yet, but I assume that probably most of you are already. Um, thanks for the support for the last couple of, well, the last two years. Thanks for the 50,000 subs subscriptions so far. Um, I'm looking forward to the next couple of years. And as always, it was a pleasure to be here, to co or to join the stream and to talk about things and obviously to get sweet cooked meat. Check out Robin's um, YouTube channel. He hasn't been uploading for a while, yeah, but there I have will to, be I, something I have to, cool up. Yeah, yeah, I have to admit that I didn't make a video in the last even couple of months. It's not even <laughs> measured in weeks. <laughs> but this will change um, because I am working on a home automation project. I'm more into the electronics side of projects. Stefan is the 3D printing guy, actually. Um, but if you are interested in, I made some custom PCBs. I ordered them already. They are working. I assembled them. If you are into that, um, take a look at my channel. Maybe you find a video or two that uh, you'll find interesting. And yeah. I am looking forward to see you there. Yeah. I'm looking forward to see you guys in the next video and in the next live stream. I don't know when it's coming. The next video will be up next week. Um, if I don't see you guys again and saying seeing is kind of weird yeah. that, because I'm just looking into the camera. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and yeah, have a great all holiday. the best. Yeah, have a yeah. great holiday. Bye. Bye guys. See you next time. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to um, Thomas Sanlados and my podcast, The Melt Zone. <laughs> All right, bye.